this current affairs I tried to cover from 11th till 19th April, though the date is 22nd we are, because we are doing it on 22nd, but the time period of the current affairs that I have covered in this particular uh, what you call file is 11th to 19th April, all important current affairs from 11th of April till 19th of April. Achha, how many of you are reading or studying the current affairs being posted on the telegram? In the current affairs, uh, the first current affairs is related to Sikkim, article 371F. See please read, people who are appearing in prelims this year, read article 371 completely with all its subsections because article 371A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, it is all concerning 1111 states basically. If you know the history of article 371, this was primarily inserted with an intention to give us what you call as a sense of uh, some, some special privilege to certain uh, territories that decided to join India. So, territories like in, in fact our AP, erstwhile United Andhra Pradesh was also one of the you know special category of states that you know joined on some conditions in the integration of India. So, 371 F belongs to Sikkim. Now, the question is, if you see the latest issue, come niche, in the latest issue it is says that the finance bill of 2023 redefines Sikkimese as any Indian citizen domiciled in Sikkim. Now, they are trying to define who the citizen of where Sikkim. Now, in the dimension of domicile, D-O-M-I-C-I-L-E. Now, what the Sikkim people are saying is, when Sikkim joined India, 1975, no? 1975, Sikkim joined India. When Sikkim joined India, we said you will get certain special privileges under Article 371F. This is what the government of India promised, Article 371F. Now, as per that article, this special privilege, we said that we decided a particular date, whosoever is living in Sikkim, only they will be considered to be the Sikkim citizens and the parliament can, the, the sorry, the assembly of the Sikkim can decide who is the domicile of Sikkim. Now, with the finance bill 2023, it is saying that anybody who is a domicile of Sikkim, it means that anybody who came to Sikkim after 1975 can also claim that he is a domicile of Sikkim. But what the Sikkimese people saying is that when we said Sikkimese, it means the people who were in Sikkim before a particular period, only those people because they do not want to extend the benefits of being a Sikkimese person to others who have come to Sikkim after 1975. Why? Because the fear in the minds of the Sikkim people is that people may be forcefully made to come to Sikkim and try to disturb the demographic profile of the Sikkim also. If you remember, as per 371F, I think it is given here also, they were also exempted from paying income tax. So, now the finance bill, what it is saying? The finance bill 2023 redefines Sikkimis as any Indian citizen. So, that is when they are fearing, earlier it was not any Indian citizen, it was a Sikkimese citizen. If you see, Come to the first line about Article 371F. Sikkim finally opted to become a full-fledged 22nd state of India in 1975, wide constitution's 36th amendment, please underline this 36th amendment, with special provision laid for the state under Article 371F of the constitution of India. Okay? And it says, according to Article 371F, the members of the legislative assembly of Sikkim shall elect the representative of Sikkim in the house of people. Okay? To protect the rights and interests of various sections of the population of Sikkim, parliament may provide for the number of seats in the assembly which may be filled only by candidates from those sections only. So, it means anybody who has come to Sikkim after this time period cannot be a member of the Sikkim assembly. That is what they are trying to say. Only the descendants of Sikkim subjects, those who lived in the state before its merger with India whose names were mentioned in the 1961 register are Sikkimese with rights to own a land and get state government jobs. So, this is the problem. So, what they say is 
whose ever names were mentioned in the 1961 register and who lived in Sikkim before 1975, only those people should be recognized as the Sikkimese people and those people only have the right to claim for the state government jobs. So, this is the problem. And now suddenly Sitaraman had made a statement that any Indian citizen domiciled in Sikkim, say if a family from Telangana decides to go and stay in Sikkim today in 2023, because they are, what is the dimension of domicile? Maybe a time period, maybe a particular time period, 7 years, that is how your government, the state government talks about 7 years of domicile, no? meaning continuation domicile of 7 years. Say if 2023 you go, 2030 you may become a domicile of Sikkim. If the Sikkim says, I have an objection to this. Only these two category of peoples can be called as Sikkimese people, right? Now, if the finance bill 2023 redefines Sikkimese as any Indian citizen domiciled in Sikkim extending to them the same benefits as that of original inhabitants whose forefathers names were in the 1961 register. So, this is where the problem is coming. And this violates article 371F which was the basis for the merger of Sikkim with India in 1975. So, write a mains question. Give a brief outline of, give a brief outline of, brief outline, underline the word brief outline. Give a brief outline of various issues emanating from give a brief outline of various issues emanating from the special privileges given to the special privileges given to the various states under under article 371 will stop Do you agree? Do you agree? Comma. It is high time to change certain dynamics of this article. To change certain dynamics of these articles. I have made a list of article. 71 is Maharashtra and Gujarat. 71A is Nagaland, B is Assam, C is Manipur, D is AP. Now, AP ka new 2014 also they have done. So, A, B, C, D, then F is Sikkim, G is Mizoram, H is Arunachal and J is Karnataka. Now, prelims perspective also it is important and one more dimension, why Karnataka is here, try to google about it especially 371J, okay. why Karnataka is here, huh, yes, fundamental rights of, but JNK was also the same provision, no? you could not purchase any property there, you cannot claim, see understand what happens is, whenever these, these special states which were joined India, special provisions were given with an intention to make them feel that their originality will not be lost in the process of integration. So, it was a promise kind of a thing. If we try to see from the rule book perspective of fundamental rights of mine, see the, the fundamental right to property is not a fundamental right now, it is a legal right now. So, he, the government is not stopping you from going to Sikkim and you know at, uh, what you call uh, domiciling there. But what the Sikkimese people are saying is because when we joined, you promised. See, understand the geopolitical scenario when Sikkim joined India. So, hota hai na, kabhi kabhi jab shadi ka time fix ho raha hota hai, date fix ho raha hota hai, many a times it so happens that instead of 20 lakhs, they suddenly say 25 lakhs. So, th then you will say, chalo okay, fine. So, whatever these kind of signatories agreements are signed at that point of time, because of the heated movement and increased intensity of debates, they generally try to accommodate all the wishes and gradually we try to settle those wishes over a period of time. So, when you go back to 1975, not only this, you would have agreed upon some other things also, because you badly wanted Sikkim to be integrated into India because of the Doklam plateau and all problem, right? So, usse mein to humne de diya. 
but now silently government introducing this clause in the finance bill is a movement in the direction that now you have got special status for 20, 50 years now. I think now it is high time to allow any Indian citizen to opt for security. But what they are doing? No, no, 1975, do not forget. So, these are all political, more influenced by politics than reality. Okay? So, understand that dimension under what circumstances we made Sikkim to join India. Okay? You, you see the Tripura merger agreement, you see the Manipur merger agreement, much more different clauses are there or other than this. Okay? You, the Nagaland was also in news, no? the urban local body elections are due. Nagaland is not willing to give women the reservation in the urban local body elections, though it is constitutionally mandated now. Nagaland says no, as per the Naga customs, the women have no role in politics. So, we will not allow any women to contest in the politics of Nagaland. So, then they are also seeking 271 uh, B or A, I think. A, 371A, it was in news, no? Nagaland urban local elections, it was given in the YouTube, if ne, uh, Hindu ka pura article aya tha, editorial mein, okay? So, understand, because, because the 371A promised to protect their tribal cultures and traditions, right? Now, suddenly you bring constitution in front of them and you say, no, you have to agree to this, there would be repercussions, there would be repercussions. Nagaland is not willing to give women and more so, what if a woman is elected as chairman? They say in our customs and tradition, women cannot head an institution. So, they have their own because you promised under article 371A that you will uphold the Naga customary practices and belief systems. In my belief system, women does not have a place. Suddenly, why your equality is coming into play here and you are trying to give them some special place. So, these problems will come, will come and it is good that this problem should come. In, in the in maintaining the diversity of the country, the continuation of these problems is very important, very important. So that the we see that's why you know India is unity in diversity. There are so many diversities. Diversity is not only in religion. Diversity is in sex. That male female diversity, education, lifestyle, belief systems, customs, cultures, languages, everything is there. There is a lot of diversity. So that diversity has to remain. Okay. Chal. Next, international big cat alliance. One question on any big cat is for sure this time. One question on big cat, either scientific lines he will ask, environmental protection lines he will ask or any current dimension, some event connected he will definitely ask. So, we, we have formed this international big cat alliance to commemorate the 50 years of project tiger and also 30 years of project elephant. Okay? So, tiger and elephant suddenly becomes important for us at least this year, at least for this year. Tiger, elephant was also in news, no? Recently, something happened with the elephant. Recent past, some things are happening with the elephants. Hmm? Not only bomb blast, lot of uh, electrocution cases are happening, Odisha especially, the electrocution of elephants, the poaching for the ivory is happening and uh, the collusion with the trains is one of the major causes of death of elephants. So, all these things are issues are burning up because hundreds of elephants are getting killed because of this. Though definitely less by man and human conflict, but more because of these things. You will not believe in the last couple of years, government has spent more than 200 crores to protect our elephants. But now the people are questioning, paisa gaya ka? where have you spent this money we want to know. That is how the questions are being raised now. So much of money has gone. Okay? Now, International Big Cat Alliance, Big Cats Alliance. The Prime Minister launched the International Big Cat Alliance for conservation of 7 big cats. Please make a note of all of them, Tiger, Lion, Leopard, Snow Leopard, Cheetah, Jaguar and Puma harboring our planet. The alliance aims to reach out to 97 range countries covering the natural habitats of all these 7 big cats. Right? And who are, what are these big cats? Cat family and genus. The family of cats Felidae comprises 3 genus, Panthera, Puma and Asinonics. The last Asinonics is very important because the cheetahs belong to this genus. The third genus of Asinonics, the cheetahs belongs to this. If you go to the last column, status cheetah, Asinonics jabatus. Asinonics jabatus. Status is vulnerable, the fastest land mammal, the cheetah is the only cat without retractable claws. The grip helps it accelerate faster than any sports car 0 to 100 kilometers in just 3 seconds it can take that. 
cheetahs are not aggressive towards humans and they have been tamed since the ancient era they don't breed well in captivity underline this statement the cheetahs don't that is the reason why see the relocation of cheetah has happened very recently right by modi in the past also many a times we tried to do this but the, the because this cheetahs do not well breed in a in an enclosed environment that is the reason why they could not multiply so whenever we brought these cheetahs back then during manmohan singh's time also cheetahs came but over a period of time once they lived their life they died without any progeny further because of maybe the changed circumstances and also the controlled environment cheetahs are known not to breed in a controlled environment theek okay? hai chalo go back to the article first cat family and genus family of cats felidae comprises the three genuses panthera puma and asinonyx panthera which all comes make a list separately tiger comes in panthera tigris the lion comes under panthera leo then the jaguar comes under panthera onca and the leopard also comes under panthera paridus and snow leopard comes under panthera so the leopards jaguars the lions and the tigers all four of them comes under the genus family of panthera right the cougar c o u g a r he is the only guy who is coming under puma concolor the cougar right and in this in this the most problematic is your tiger which is endangered status is the endangered tiger is the largest of all the wild cats and also the earliest panthera member to exist please underline this word largest of all the wild cats tiger happens to be the largest of all the wild cats primarily a forest animal the range from siberian taiga to the sundarban delta there are certain categories of tigers please make a list of those categories of tigers the you know which is the tiger which is heaviest and which is the tiger which has become extinct please make a box usme se bhi ek question aayega related to tiger right so 6 7 varieties of tigers are there uska try to maintain that theek hai now it is the national animal of india bangladesh malaysia and south korea again important for prelims india bangladesh malaysia and south korea these are the four countries where tiger happens to be their national animal project tiger is a tiger conservation program launched in 73 by the government of india it is administered by the tiger conservation authority right now in the lion one important part is the fourth point the range of asiatic lion is restricted to gir national park of gujarat very very important gir national park of gujarat if you see the comparison of the range of tiger and the lions you will see that only in a very fine part of our map only in a very fine part of our map if you see only this part you will find the lion and the remaining entire part of your country you will find the tiger and you will not find any tiger here because these two big cats cannot live together right so that is how naturally also there is a boundary between both the cats that is why the lions are only found here and not anywhere else other than in zoo parks or something zoological and controlled conditions so naturally they are visible only in the gir national park of gujarat and tigers are seen all across not only here you go to bangladesh you go to malaysia you go to south korea you will find tigers right and one more important the world distribution of tigers please make a note of try to draw a map of that the world distribution of tigers because you ha also have the siberian tigers and also right so uska bhi ek world map banao bada acha sa answer aayega theek hai and when it comes to the lion the last the national emblem of our country is basically the lion is signified there right now now when you come to leopard leopard ka one point is very important the third point the most adaptable of all big cats they occupy diverse habitats at all altitudes across africa and asia right very important right okay chalo next to the come to the next article related to recognition of national or state party it was in news because certain earlier recognized national parties were delisted as being national parties ha captivity that's what see when it when it makes a statement what is the statement they don't breed well in captivity in the sense 
when you leave this cheetah understand the meaning of not breeding well there is something known as this cycle of what you call breeding gestation if a cheetah is supposed to have three cycles of babies in say three years and if it is taking more time than this in captivity and number of offsprings that are happening in one cycle it is also getting negatively reduced so it does not mean that it will not breed at all even if it breeds the chances of conception the chances of increased number of offspring and the repetition of the breeding cycle this is what gets negatively affected so when they say do not breed well it does not mean that it will not breed at all maybe the chances of conception are low maybe the number of offsprings who are born is low maybe the survivability of the offsprings is also negatively affected generally what happens in these big cats if say for example a lioness delivers seven babies by the time the seven grow to adult you will see hardly one will survive because that is how the nature balances the carnivores and the herbivores if all the seven survive to become adults then the problem is that the it, it has the, the the environment the biodiversity has to support seven male lions to be fed the diet of a lion is very heavy right so that is how what happens is the nature will automatically adjust the balancing of carnivores and the herbivores okay so that is where when they say that they don't breed well it does not mean that they won't breed at all okay so many other dimensions of you know breeding will come into play okay next recognition of national or state party in news why because two reasons why it was in news the aam aadmi party was given the status of a national party important from your prelims perspective okay and uh, certain other parties who were uh, earlier recognized as national parties have now been de recognized as the national parties recently the aam aadmi party was given the status of a national party by the election commission of india the election commission also revoked revoked means removed the national party status of please make a note of these parties maybe in prelims bit aayega which of the following are national parties in our country okay so all india trinamool congress the ncp the nationalist congress party and the communist party of india okay so these are the three parties who have been revoked whose national party status has been revoked by the election commission of india and many other state parties state parties what you call status has been revoked by the election commission of india now please come important paragraph what is a national party it says that the name suggests that a national party would be one that has a presence nationally as opposed to a regional party whose presence is restricted to only a particular state or a region whenever we say regional party generally the presence of that regional party they generally use these two words presence and prominence these are the two words which generally the election commission of india uses it says that regional party is a party whose general presence or prominence is generally restricted to one particular state generally one particular state that's what it says whose presence is restricted to only a particular state or maybe within a state to a right okay so that is called a regional party regional party national parties are usually india's bigger parties such as the congress and bjp however some smaller parties are also recognized as national parties because their presence or prominence is felt in more than one particular state right now a certain stature is sometimes associated with being a national party but this does not necessarily translate into having a lot of national political clout try to understand this national political clout what do you understand by this word political clout we say no bjp has the strongest political clout today what does it mean even in a state where bjp is not in power bjp can influence lot of political decision making so this is known as political clout like say we say that you know earlier tdp was ruling party of andhra united ap now tdp is neither in power in andhra nor in telangana but however we say that at least in andhra even though it is not in power tdp has lot of political clout 
it means its ability to create pressure on the existing party pressure on the existing party the ability to highlight the misdeeds of the party leaders and also the mass base these are the three dimensions which are used as a reference point for political clout so you can have this without being in power also so there could be a small party or a national party with national political clout so that is how now aam aadmi party is suddenly getting traction now people are talking about aam aadmi party in telangana also in next elections if not winning the election it will give stiff competition to trs now brs bharatiya rashtriya samiti so that is how understand the intention of changing the name from trs to brs is to give a reflection of its national character though technically may not be true because trs is not present in any other state other than telangana so but with an intention to give it a national political clout the name was changed from trs to brs that's how the political clout is very important okay now come to the criteria the eci has laid down the technical criteria for a party to be recognized as a national party so the first one a political party would be recognized as a national party if what is it is recognized in four or more states what is the meaning of recognized he says that any political party which is recognized in number of states is what more than more than four states this is one the word they are using is recognized what is the meaning of the word recognized here he says that if its candidates polled at least 6% 6% of all the valid votes of all valid votes in any four or more states in the last lok sabha or assembly elections and has at least four mps in the last lok sabha polls four mps in last lok sabha polls this is one four mps hona chahiye and 6% of all the valid votes either in lok sabha or the state assembly not only lok sabha or the state assembly 6% of all the valid votes and whose presence would be felt in more than four states so is trs a national party no now how many national parties are there how many national parties are there hmm bolo ha huh? indian national congress bjp okay अरे निकाल दिया भैया पागल हो गया मरवाएगा तो मरवाएगा यार हम्म मेरा नाम मत बोलना इंटरव्यू में जाके ठीक हाँ 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 एम आई एम नॉट नेशनल पार्टी वो ऐसे जंप कर रहा है फालतू में चल हाँ वाई डिड यू से सिक्स हम्म पूजिता एनी अदर पार्टी उठेदा हाँ एनी बड़ी फ्रॉम कर्नाटक और तमिलनाडु हाँ ना, अरे नॉट यू पार्टी वो बेचारे दोनों हाथ उठा दिए हाँ हम्म आई ओनली प्लीज मेक अ नॉट प्रॉब्लम होगा नहीं ठीक है चलो स्टेट पार्टी वेन यू कम टू दि स्टेट पार्टी डायमेंशन वेरी सिंपल अट्लीस्ट सिक्स पर्सेंट वोट शेयर इन द लास्ट असेंबली इलेक्शन सिक्स पर्सेंट रिमेंबर दिस फोर सिक्स फोर हियर फोर स्टेट सिक्स पर्सेंट ऑफ वैलिड वोट्स और फोर एम पीज इन द लास्ट 
Lok Sabha. When it comes to state party, 6 percent of the vote share in the last assembly elections and have at least 2 MLAs, 2 MLAs and then at least 3 of the total, 3 percent of the total number of seats or 3 seats whichever is more in the last assembly elections, either 3 percent of the seats or 3 whichever is more, very important, theke? at least 1 MP for every 25 members or any fraction allotted to the state in the Lok Sabha. It means if a state has 25 seats in the Lok Sabha, at least 1 MP should be there from that particular state. So, that is the fraction 1 is to 25 fraction. So, remember this 1 is to 25 fraction and have at least 8 percent of the total valid votes in the last assembly election or Lok Sabha election for that particular year. So, the conditions for the state party are more wider than the national party. Why? Why? Why they have given so much wider connotation to the state party than the national party? So that, so that more and more political representations happen. That is the idea giving opportunity to more and more number of people to come to politics. That is the idea. Right? So, that is why when it comes to state, more number of the wider scope is given for the state. So, the, see the formation of a party in the state is very important because gradually that party may become the national party, yes or no. So, that is how you have to understand at this stage if you narrow the recognition of a party as a state party, the clout of the existing state parties will not allow them to do anything big. So, that is how to give them a more breather space, the conditions are more broadened when it comes to the state party. Yeah, yes. Who, who? Kaha pe? It is recognized in four or more states. It can, second criteria it would have met, no? Haan, that's what? OR ka OR ka sam, matlab samasta hai? See, if it candidates polled at least 6 percent of total valid votes in any of the four or more states in the last Lok Sabha or assembly elections and has at least four MPs in the Lok Sabha polls. To phir dhakkan hai, what is the last word? Ah. It does not mean the last Lok Sabha mein tere char MP baithe hone ho chhe. In the polls he is talking, he is talk standing as MPs. Chal. <coughs> How are the re recognition of the uh, political parties happening? One is the Election Commission of India under the Representation of Peoples Act 1951, very important. According to the Election Commission, any party seeking registration has to submit an application to the Commission within a period of? 30 days powers conferred by election commission article under article 324 of the constitution of india and 29a of the representation of peoples act 1951 so 29a says any indian citizen purpose of contesting elections and 100 registered electors as its members there is no procedure available for the deregistration of a dormant political party what is the meaning of the word dormant which is not very active in politics now. So, there is no there is no criteria for de-recognizing any dormant political party. Do we have any dormant political party today? Any dormant? No. Generally no. Generally no. Kyunki kya hota? Once a political party is formed, generally it starts working in that particular direction. This generally happens in, in where uh, dormant political party structures where the change has happened from you know democracy to monarchy or from democracy to military takeover, military coups happening. There the dormant nature of the party will come into play, but not in a country where the transition of power between two political parties is happening through democratic process. See that is why India is said ever since 1947, ever since 1947 whatever transitions in power has happened transitions in power has happened, it was always has been a democratic transition. What is the meaning of transition here? Transition here, change of government, like maybe 
there is something known as the word anti incumbency. Kabi naam suna hai? Kitna logo ne naam nahi suna hai? Anti incumbency. Good. Dormant politically. Anti incumbency. See, generally it is understood that the popular support will be not with the ruling party. Generally, it is a believed that the popular support will not be with the ruling party because the people would have been fed up with the party. So, there is always a desire to change, always a desire to give the reins of running the country into new hands. Experimentation has generally been the trend in democracy. So, that is how Trump also came to power, right. So, generally, it is said that whenever a ruling party is going back to elections, it is more fearful than the party which is outside because it has to win. So, the, what the political party is doing incumbency, incumbent the one who is in power anti incumbency means somebody who is not in power, but wanting to get into power. So, what happens is many a times the poll before going for poll a particular mood is set that is when the opposition what it does it tries to bring out all the wrong doings of the existing party. And when it highlights the wrongdoings of the political party which is in power, the, the idea of anti incumbency sets into the common masses mind. So, that is when the common man will start thinking of removing the existing party and bringing the new party to power. So, that is how this idea of anti incumbency goes not in the favor of existing party in the favor of the party which has probably been removed from power by the previous party. Okay. So, that is how anti incumbency is a very important factor. Okay. So, that is why whenever elections are there, the timing of election is a very important factor. That is why you see some of the state parties and at sometimes national parties also, it is for 5 years, they will not wait for 5 years to complete, maybe 4 years, 4 and a half years or maybe less than that also, because they presently see that the mood of the people is not anti incumbent. So, that is how they want to take advantage of the positive mood for the government and they call the election commission of India to go for the state elections. So, that is when the elections are done because the mood is not anti incumbent the chances of that political party winning the elections back is more. So, instead of 5 plus 5 they are ready to forego maybe this 3 and half, but definitely get 5 more years. So, that is the idea. Okay. So, that do not become prey to anti incumbency rule generally played by the people. Take Chalo. Effects on the rains on wheat crop, ye bahut news mein tha. So, I thought maybe a question here and there can come in prelims. The unusual rise in the heat followed by an untimely spell of widespread rain left wheat growing farmers worried generally in the central India. Right? About wheat, it is a rabi crop and is the main cereal crop in India. It has wide adaptability, underline the word, it has wide adaptability wheat. It can be grown not only in the tropical and subtropical zones, but also in the temperate zone and the cold tracks of the far north beyond even the 60 degree north latitude, very very important 60 degree north latitude. A statement dega, wheat is generally grown below 60 degree north latitude as a statement. Okay? It can tolerate severe cold and snow and resume growth with the setting in of warm weather in spring. It is sown in October, December and harvested during April and June. Right? It is grown in a variety of soils in India, soils with a clay loam or loam texture, good structure and moderate water holding capacity are ideal for wheat cultivation. A major wheat growing states, UP, Punjab, Haryana. MP, Rajasthan, Bihar and Gujarat. Unluckily, the heat wave was felt in all the states and followed by untorrential rain for certain amount of time. So, that is the reason why wheat has become a critical factor. Why? Because you have to link this with the food corporation of India buffer stocking also. Please link it with the buffer stocking norms related to wheat, buffer stocking norms related to wheat. Now, if the production is redu reduced, now April has set in, right? Ap April is about to get over. So, now how this particular event has affected the production of wheat this particular year. So, now 
with this what will happen in future immediately the government will say no export of wheat because my buffer stock is not there my harvest is not good I cannot allow you to export wheat. So, that is how everything is linked from here. Chalo, next article preventive detention preventive detention very important in news for some reasons though not good for us preventive detention what is preventive detention arresting someone before committing a crime preventive how many of you agree with this you said arresting someone before committing a crime it means you all can be arrested we all can be arrested hmm? now in democracy what is the most important pillar we talk about free will no live living free will now if somebody is using this against you I will give you examples how this have been used in the past. A person is running a lottery business, a person is running a lottery business, his name is Muslim guy. It was linked that whatever profits he is earning from lottery, he is sending it to Pakistan. Koi matlab hai uska. Kitna bechega saal mein? 1 crore. 10 crores can a lottery business running guy earn this much money how much he may earn 10 lakhs 20 lakhs profit profit after all expenses are done profit now government has in the past linked this lottery business guy that whatever money he is earning he is sending it to Pakistan because in Pakistan they are supporting terrorism. So, indirectly this guy is also supporting terrorism is ko le ja ke band kar diya. So, in a democracy that is why it is said that the I think in the first line only somewhere the supreme court is making a statement arbitrary power to the state. state. Generally we know that understand the process of arrest we generally feel that the police can arrest anybody but is it so no it is the magistrate who gives the authority to the police to arrest somebody that is why that old cinema dialogue no warrant that villain will ask the police officer or police person who is gone to arrest him warrant that he looks back at the constable, Led sir, Pada Valdam. So, understand because without the warrant, the police has got no authority to arrest. But in the case of preventive detention, on any flimsy excuse, on any dimension, you can be arrested. So, the preventive detention has always been a bone of contention between judiciary and the executive. Always remember any thing like this whenever we are using the word arbitrary power of the state it is basically the executive it is basically the executive. So, you have to understand that this has been in the past used most notoriously by the government in power has been used most notoriously you will not believe it is said that when article 370 was removed and 35A was removed, 70 that related to J and K, so many arbitrary arrests happened without even the knowledge of media. It was said that there was a point of time when more or less maximum political representation of the J and K was in jail as a preventive because they knew that the moment 370 withdrawal revocation of 370 is announced these people may do something wrong they may collide with each other and do something wrong so as a preventive method 
before the announcement everybody was arrested so that there is nobody left outside to coordinate see even if you have to coordinate a communal unrest or a riot you have to do lot of coordination no somebody has to make payment somebody has to do whatsapp messages come bhaiya this is the time this is the place so all these things have to be done right so it is better put everybody in jail first then announce that this has happened so in the past the government has used this provision not sparingly but very loosely not sparingly but very loosely what it says the supreme court observed in a judgment that preventive detention laws in india are a colonial legacy and confer arbitrary power to the state the judgment described preventive detention laws as extremely powerful with unfettered discretion very very important these words extremely powerful with unfettered discretion extremely powerful okay now it means the detention of a person without a trial it confers to the detention at the will of the executive this is the most disturbing part of the preventive detention is pre, uh, detention at the will of the executive detention at the will of the executive the moment the will of the executive is coming into play what is getting affected your free will is getting affected this you need to understand in normal day to day life we come across punitive detention now if this is preventive detention what is normal detention called it is called punitive detention it means detention with an intention to punish somebody for an act which is classified as wrong as per a act in vogue it is punitive detention in the existing rule books as per that if you have committed an offence then only you can be arrested and punished that is called punitive detention detention with an intention to punish somebody for a wrongful act based on any statutory law for the time being in force this is what the law says for the time being in force you can punish somebody only for a offence committed which is written as an offence in any of the statutory laws for the time being in force so this is called punitive detention right but preventive detention is before anything happen you go and simply arrest somebody okay now uh, in normal day to day life we come across punitive detention which seeks to punish a person for what he or she has done after a trial in a court of law for the offence committed by him or her now on the other hand the objective of preventive detention is to prevent a person from doing something and the detention in this case takes place on the apprehension that he or she is going to do something prejudicial to the security of the state public order maintenance of supplies and services essential to the community defense foreign affairs or security of india ye sab zarurat nahi hai government ko last word is enough ek kafi hai if the government feels you standing onto the side of the road and peeing can also be security of again security of india this have happened in the past i am not making up things have people have carried out arrest in the past for this the legislative power to enact the laws very very important from prelims perspective the legislative power to enact a law of preventive detention is divided by the constitution between the union and the state it means both the union government or the state government can legislate laws related to preventive detention very very important okay now safeguards article 22 3 of the constitution provides for preventive detention laws 22 4 contains the following safeguards against the abuse of power it says no law providing for preventive detention shall authorize the detention of a person for longer than 3 months decision detention beyond 3 months period requires clearance from an advisory board so this advisory board will again be formed by the government obviously the government will give instructions to the advisory board automatically your extension will get your detention will get extended beyond 3 months but as a formality first initial detention cannot be authorized for more than 3 months at before the 3 months is completed an advisory board has to be constituted if it says it is necessary 
for the security of India, your detention can be extended beyond 3 months. This is the logic that they try to give. Very important, 44th Amendment Act of 1978 has reduced the period of detention without obtaining the opinion of an advisory board from 3 to 4 months. However, this provision has not yet been brought into force. So, though the 44th Constitutional Amendment happened, Commandment Act happened in which it has reduced the detention period from 3 months to 2 months. See, understand two constitutional amendments are very important, 42nd and 44. It is said that 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act is known to be the one of the largest amendments, Constitutional Amendments Act of our country. This was brought by none other than your Indira Gandhi and it in some ways was against the basic tenets of your fundamental rights. So, detaining somebody on preventive lines is also against. So, when Indira Gandhi was removed from power and the next government came into power, they brought in the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act, which tried to correct lot of wrongdoings of the 42nd Amendment Act. So, that is how the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act tried to reduce this 3 months period to 2 months period. 44th Constitutional Amendment Act, there are many other topics. One of the topics of the CAA of the 44 was reducing the preventive detention period from 3 months to 2 months. But even after an amendment act is followed, uske baad the rules or the governing rules have to be notified by the government in the gazette. Though this act was brought, but the gazette notification did not happen. Any order, if it has to be executed on ground, even after the law is made, the rules governing the law have to be given by the government. Till such time the gazette notification does not come out, that cannot be executed on the ground. So, though the act was passed, the gazette notification did not come and this rule from 3 to 2 months could never be made on ground. So, even today, the preventive detention initially is for 3 months. 3 months ke liye damad ban ke rehna hai, thik hai? Chalo. So, these are the laws under which the preventive detention has been mandated. Other than this, your UAPA also talks about the preventive detention. It was in news recently, the UAPA. Now, understand the seriousness of the issue. Understand the seriousness of the issue. On the name of security of India, anybody can be detained under preventive detention. Yes or no? And this time period of preventive detention is for 3 months. If it has to be extended beyond 3 months, you need to have the recommendation of the advisory body or advisory board. Now, when I take you to UAPA Act, if you remember the provisions of the UAPA Act, where anybody can be declared as a, now the worst part is anybody whom the government believes is the word in the law, that is the worst part. If tomorrow any government person believes that Oberoi sir is a terrorist, he does not have to prove anybody, he has to revoke UAPA, prove that just make a statement that Oberoi sir is a terrorist, use the preventive detention law, teen mahine ke liye andar. Understand the, where the free will has gone, where it has gone? to be nowhere. That is why the Supreme Court made a statement. One is arbitrary and it gives unfettered discretionary powers, unfettered discretion. That is why it is trying to say, if I invoke all the clauses collectively, cumulatively, the freedom of citizen goes for a toss. That is what the government is trying to, the, the what you call judiciary is trying to say. Chalo. Next article is on State Energy Efficiency Index 2022. 1 and 22. Very important Ministry of Power, Energy Efficiency Index. Yeah, any question? Haan, push the. No, always remember board, B O A R D, committee, government ka bandha ho. The moment the word is saying board, committee, it is the government person. Need not necessarily be the government representative, it means elected member, it could be anybody nominated by the government. 
it could be a judicial person also it could be a person of prominence in the society could be a expert in that particular field can be a lawmaker can be a police person it can be anybody board but the responsibility is board now if the government calls me and tells obra you be part of the advisory board where is my loyalty stilted towards the government or towards the person obviously towards the government if my loyalty shift towards the person next time i will not get a call from the government logic right so that is how but what happens is because eminent people are sitting as part of the board they try to weigh the pros and cons aisa nahi ke because government nominated me i will just completely blindly what you call side with the government no not necessarily many a times it has happened that the advisory boards have given recommendations against see Three months time is more than enough. Believe me. Three months time, sub change will change. In three months time, 2019, 5th of August, Kashmir changed. In three months time, usko three months ke baad bahar chhod dunga ek din ke liye, fir pagal dunga. Subha chhod dunga, shaam mein fir utha dunga. What is the problem? I'll relieve him in the morning. Next day again I am picking. Law no, we can play. Understand this. But the government has to be very careful. The, the what you said, the judiciary might, but for a common man to go to Supreme Court, कभी High Court जाके देखो, High Court क्यों? कभी District Court जाके देखो, just go and observe District Court for one day. Go in the morning, एक अच्छा सर पेड़ ढूंढो जहाँ पे छाया है, where good shade is there, just sit there and only observe people who are coming. All the people wearing black coats feel they are kings. All the common citizens, irrespective of how rich he is, you will see him standing like this, because it is the law. So you will be surprised to see a common man or a rich man. Maybe he is coming in Mercedes. Common man is coming walking, but everybody is standing like this. In the courtroom, you cannot sit one leg over your leg. You cannot sit. Your phone rings in the courtroom. You will be hanged to death. ठीक है जिस अगर मान लो तुम्हारा वकील है फॉर एग्जांपल रश्मि इज दी लॉयर ऑफ सिद्धांत एंड सिद्धांत फोन रिंग्स लॉयर सिद्धांत को कुछ जज सिद्धांत को कुछ बोलेगा ही नहीं ही विल जस्ट गिव वन लुक टू रश्मि रश्मि अंडरस्टैंड दैट माय नौकरी इज गॉन दैट इज द काइंड ऑफ व्हाट यू कॉल एटमोस्फेयर दैट इज क्रिएटेड इन द जज इन द इन द कोर्ट रूम यू कैन नॉट you when you enter the court proceedings are going on you cannot just walk in inside the court room you have to stand you have to do this go there sit silently you want to get up you get up you do this and you go out if you do it like this he will stop hello come here who are you do you think is it some market here you understand so all these dimensions are basically designed to create fear in the mind of people about law that's the idea the idea is that that law is supreme nobody else because the judge is executing the law he becomes supreme not humanly but because of that's why it is said that there is some divine intervention through the judge for doing some acts okay so easily humne judiciary is one where you are still not allowed any foreign direct investment understand this okay easily humne judiciary mein kisi ko allow nahi kiya because we have been victims of foreign judges so we do not want to repeat this any school you will find foreigners coming and teaching law you will not find that's that's how it is ever i know ever i know ever i know a legal expert a jurist can be there a prominent person if it is prevention preventive detention related to money laundering a financial expert can also be a part of the advisory board because he understand the dynamics of money laundering any senior banker can also be put as the member of the advisory board because now money laundering and terrorist financing are linked so you will see suddenly one person from the intelligence agency can be nominated as the advisory board member hmm suspect hmm. hmm. police police at see at the end of the day ni intiki vache police modi raadu hello Ausrala, preventive the worst part is when it is under preventive detention, they will not even tell you the charges. That is the problem. Under preventive detention, for couple of days they can just while away time without even telling you the charges. In normal arrest, they have to tell the charges, no? 
ke endu arrest chesaru they should give you a chance to speak to the lawyer everything right because here the security of india takes precedence neeku phone dargadu nenu lobal endu pettaru kuda cheppu so that is how it will take time for the law to take its place after 3 days 4 days 5 days 6 days if the inspector is feeling pity on you he will say okay oka phone call chesko depending on the circumstances now if you are a influential person if you have to be arrested under preventive detention it has to be intimated to you immediately they do it if it is a political figure so that he can intimate certain things to them if you are a important person in the society but if you are a common man 6 days biryani madhyanam durutundi have this padukochu phone gudi varu happy ga e tension undadu chal hmm No, no, pro, no, sorry. No, sir, after three months, he is not accused of that. And uh, he will not be accepted by the society. Yes. So, uh, it is whose fault? Uh, it is whose fault. Nobody's fault. Like, he didn't done anything wrong. Maybe. It's just because of his suspicion. That's what I am saying. You went to a cafe to have a cup of tea with your friend. With your friend. In the next table, four or five people were having cup of tea, right? There is a camera in the tea shop. It so happened naturally, when you were having tea with your friend, one of the table members looked at you. You also replied with a smile, normal, natural smile with or to a stranger also we do, right? If that is taken and it so found that those five are terrorists, gone. For a law person to prove that you are linked is very easy. To prove that you are not linked for you is dead difficult. Are in an urke smile they say rant. No. I just smiled out of courtesy. They will say no. It was some signal. What was that signal? Signal of pada phone lo signal raavat le dikkada. So you have to understand this. See, when this comes, they will not leave anything. There have been instances where people have travelled in one particular train bogey with somebody, not knowing who he is. In same train, entire compartment people have also been arrested. As I say, because they want to interrogate you. See, the three months time is needed for interrogating to find is there any possibility of your links with them. That is how things happen. right? Now, as you said, you are clean, you have come out clean, but the society will not accept you clean. But it is your fate, you can't help. But over a period of time, the society forgets also. Change the place, nobody knows. Freedom of movement, no? he spoke. Huh? Ah. Yes, yes, terminated also. Terminated also. Ad hoc. It cannot be permanent body. Permanent body, the Firuska election procedure, sub Natak Shurvati. It is very advisory report. Okay? Chalo, next. State energy if you terrorism bolte ruk jate hoye. Ha? Aadha ghanta le liya. Chalo. State energy efficiency index 21-22. Understand the categories. Four categories. The Ministry of Power is the agency that releases this index. State energy efficiency index. Anything related to energy efficiency, you know? Favorite topic of UPSC. Anything related to energy. B E E. Bureau of Energy. Efficiency, Google about that also. Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Somehow UPSC ka kuch link hai iske sa. Energy efficiency in news, he will ask a question on energy efficiency. Thik hai? Puchega, which of the following items will have the BEE issued energy efficiency index rating? Options rahega ceiling fan, cooler, water heater, air conditioner. Which of the following above will have the BEE? index rating on them. I say Saval Pucha hai past me. So, when you see go, go back to your hostel or wherever you stay, you see the sticker on the water geyser. You will find the energy efficiency index ka sticker on that particular thing. Water heaters, geysers, air conditioners, refrigerators, all these deep freezers will have the BE index. Thik hai? Chalo. There are four categories in the in index front runner achiever contender and aspirant front runner category more than 60 points five states proudly andhra is there karnataka kerala rajasthan and telangana 
achiever 50 to 60 points Assam, Haryana, Maharashtra and Punjab. The objective of the index is driving decarbonization efforts in states and outlining recommendations to help the state drive change in energy efficiency which will contribute towards the fulfillment of SDGs and the NDCs. What are the SDGs? Sustainable Development Goals. Energy related SDG kaun sa hai? 17 hai na? Energy related SDG kaun sa hai? Population related SDG kaun sa hai? Conservation related SDG kaun sa hai? Education related SDG kaun sa hai? Yehi to hai. There is something known as physiological aspect, there is something known as psychological aspect. Ethics mein physiological aspect and psychological aspect. Hum ladki ki sundarta ko dekke hi gir jate. Hum ladke ka handsomeness ko dekke hi gir jate. Sir, tall, dark and handsome. He is 6 feet plus, he is handsome, he is dark. Aray, but what he is as a person that may not even come in the criteria of selection. That may not even come in the criteria of selection. Humne sabne SDGs pada hai. Humne sabne indices pada hai. Ma poochh raha hu sawal jawab ek karne hi hai. Sustainable Development Goal 15 kya hai? Likho homework. Ek kagaj pe hum saare SDG 17 likhenge. Or wherever you are sitting and studying, you will paste it in front of you. And one more homework is one more column to the right. Out of these 17 SDGs, where India has achieved its target and where the target is the farthest to achieve. Population control be a target hai. Abhi recently, you know, India has become the most it's a proud movement for our country that we are the most populous country in the world. It is proud movement here. Yeah. When people are not, you know, finding it difficult to live, we are going ahead. Ah, okay. Good. It, it means we are, you know, good at something. Chalo. Next. Very important in the about S double E. It is done by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency in association with whom? The Alliance for an Energy Efficient Economy. It is a tool, the what you call SEEI, the State Energy Efficiency Index is a tool to track the energy efficiency initiatives in the states and union territories, very very important. And about the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, 2001 established, it is a statutory body because it is come through an act of the parliament of India in 2001, statutory body. A question puchega, which of the following are statutory bodies? Energy efficiency, India is also a statutory body. Thik? IMD predictions on monsoon, very important. Prelims and monsoons have some link. Okay. Indian Meteorological Department predicted a borderline level normal monsoon, summer monsoon rainfall this year. Normal summer monsoon, underline the word normal summer monsoon. Okay. Now, borderline matlab touching. Borderline matlab? No, understand. Say, you get 59.55 percent in your intermediate. But tum logo ko jada aaya hoga. Main example pe bol raha Don't look at me like that. Okay? 59.55 percent. If somebody asks you how much you got, will you ever say 59? What will you say? You will round off to higher number, right? So, when I use the word borderline, see, understand, these are all predictions. The moment it is prediction, agle paan saal mein teri shadi ho jayegi, is a prediction. If I have decided not to get married, kaisa ho jayegi? Understand? If it is prediction that next three and a half months you will get married, is it prediction or a more? So, whenever they predict and 
in the past i am following imd for probably 20 years never ever its prediction came right because nature no you cannot predict the nature as per certain algorithms they will feel the the recent cyclone no odisha asani kya naam tha odisha was supposed to be hit by a cyclone no what is the name चंपेन्ड्र नु करंट अफेयर्स की जय हाँ कौन बोलेगा वॉट वॉज द नेम रिसेंट इट वॉज सपोज टू हिट अरे क्या नाम था डोंट से गूगल भी नहीं बता रहे हाँ or very in yesterday or day before it was supposed to hit but what happened the depression weakened before it could hit the coast but the state was fully prepared for facing a cyclone but luckily before it could hit the land the depression weakened the imd prediction was that devastating kya hua so it happens because the nature we do not know so these are all prediction the reason why they use this word borderline is so that kal ko idhar udhar hoga to imd will not be blamed so that is why they use this word borderline so it says that uh, it is an so meteorological predicted a borderline level normal summer monsoon rainfall this year what is the prediction normal to below normal rainfall ab uh, before that we will we'll go to categories of rainfall usme aa jao pehle niche in that if you see large excess greater than or equal to 60% of the long period average if that is the amount of rainfall it is called large excess if you go to the column of long period average long period average of rainfall is the rainfall recorded over a particular region for a given interval like month or season averaged over a long period of 30 or 50 years that is why you you use these two words no weather and climate weather and climate this weather is a short form short period of time phenomenon but climate is a long period of time phenomenon in hyderabad summers mein kabhi barish nahi hota tha hyderabad never witnessed rainfalls during summers during at least my uh, hey days but now i am seeing every third fourth or fifth day because of this crossing summer during the day evening mein there is a spell of rainfall this is basically the climatic conditions of bangalore and adjacent regions so now the climatic shift is happen bangalore never witnessed heat waves last year bangalore witnessed very drastic heat waves bangalore is one place in april may and june every day there will be rainfall last year once in 6 or 7 days only the rainfall happened so this is a shift in the climatic patterns so whenever they take long period average they take 30 to 50 years ka average then they talk about that so if the 30 50 year average is more than or equal to 60 then you they will say it large excess and if it is more than equal to between 20 to 59% then it is excess then if it is 19 to minus 19 to plus 19% that is why borderline no minus 19 to plus 19 percent it is normal so if the long period average ke hisab se even if the rainfall is within the bracket of minus 19 or plus 19 it is considered to be a normal summer monsoon right it can be minus also it can be plus also and when if it is deficient then it is minus 59 to minus 20 of the long period average and if it is large deficient minus 99 to minus 60% of the long period average small homework for you when was the last time india witnessed large deficient monsoon 1670 so the predicting the monsoon monsoon season is from june to september as we know in india as a whole the long period average is 88 cm 
and standard deviation is 9 centimeter about 10 percent of the mean value. So, generally it is felt that from June to September the monsoon would be 88 centimeters of rainfall with plus minus 9 centimeters of rainfall. This is the long period average for India last 50 years or 30 years. So, now any deviation to this in the bracket the monsoon predictions will be based on that right. Therefore, when the rainfall averaged over the country as a whole is within plus minus 10 percent from its LPA or 90 percent to 110 percent of the LPA the rainfall is said to be normal. So, now understand based on what the averages the IMD is trying to bring in. So, they have decided this figure they have given you this bracket they will do what happens is IMD what they do is they have testing stations spread across the country. They will spread they will test ok in this testing station the rainfall predictions are 110 centimeters, another testing station 60, another testing stations 80, another testing station 90. So, subka average mila ke then they try to predict. Okay. Because it may so happen in some places the rainfall would be very high, in some places it would be very less. So, they have to average it out because they have to give the picture of the entire country per se not a particular place like Chirapunji received you know once used to be the highest rainfall receiving area in the country. So, now it is not something else has taken the place of Chirapunji the name of it is hmm? good. Chalo, next Good Friday agreement. Good Friday we celebrated recently. So, there is an agreement by name Good Friday also. Take the US President Joe Biden is going to visit Belfast, the capital of Northern Ireland to mark the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday agreement. To Good Friday agreement, I am only discussing this though directly India has got nothing to do with this. Just to explain you the difference between Great Britain, United Kingdom and the British Isles. Try to understand the see the picture. The, the article is not very important, you can read the article. The Great Britain is Scotland, England and Wales. Only the right side, the one which is in dark is called Great Britain. When the Northern Ireland from the left, if it is added, it becomes, it becomes United Kingdoms, right. The Scotland, England, Wales plus Northern Ireland is called the United Kingdom. When it is, anybody when it is only Britain? If it is only Britain, Brexit who are recently, so who all exist exited? Well, तुम साले कुछ नहीं पढ़ते हो, खाली Brexit Brexit पढ़ के हट गए हो. Scotland उसमें involved है, हाँ, ठीक है. So what is Britain only? When the Brexit happened, who all exited from this? from European Union is my question. And when it is British Isles, Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland and also the complete Ireland also comes into picture. Okay? Now, yeah, next is our brother Saudi Arabia, he is our brother only right, because we have lot of dependency on him. <coughs> Lot of things are changing in Saudi Arabia. Why? Kya ho Suddenly, why he has from become from a strong, staunch deontological approach? Why is he coming towards teleological approach? Why? And in this photography, kuch dala hai case mein. Photograph nahi hai. I wanted to show you something also. I did not bring. Now Saudi is in talks with Iran also. Saudi is in talks with Syria also, Saudi is in talk with Yemen also, Russia is brokering some, China is brokering some, Britain is brokering some, Saudi Arabia. Why is Saudi Arabia trying to find peace is my question. Kya? Progress. My question is, this fellow is trying to find peace in the neighborhood. When do you do that? 
he is trying to find he has a important rival no iran hai iske sath bhi utni khas dosti nahi hai iske sath bhi itni khas dosti nahi hai now why is he trying in fact if you remember who brokered china brokered a deal no? russia is brokering somewhere my question is why is saudi arabia seeking peace is the question because this fellow is going away from in some ways may not be i told you do pakke dost hai us and saudi arabia it may be to just to show to the world andar kya chal raha hai god only knows right now this fellow has distant from him for some reason now if it is so we all know that this fellow used him to have control in west asia in the past so if he has distance from him he can use anybody else also to counter him iske sath chance nahi hai because problem chal raha hai chal raha hai but if these two people join hands they can easily take care of this people if you see the regional power structures right that is the reason why he is not allowing him to gain any strategic depth in the west asia so that whenever he wants to enter he has to come via him or via him so he does not want him to interfere in west asia and seeing this opportunity countries like countries like and to some extent countries like india are trying to gain foothold in this particular geo see in the entire geopolitical construct of the world west asia always played the most important part because of the oil because of the oil that's all aur kuch bhi nahi hai wahan pe before 1920 saudi arabia was a desert believe me saudi arabia was a complete desert there is a concept of uh, now human composting which is coming into play no human composting suna hai naam human composting where instead of cremating or burying humans in in big big barrels they are putting the human bodies and using some decomposting materials to create compost material out of human beings which can be used as soil nutrients which is which now the people are believing it is more nature friendly than anything else i spoke about one concept no our forefathers there is a tradition of burying them within our agricultural fields okay so now people are thinking on these lines of human composting countries like saudi arabia and all are strictly against it and one more entity the catholic church is against this practice he say they say you are decomposing the body well very good accepted do it what is happening to the soul i told you the dimension of soul comes under metaphysics nobody knows what is there so that is how the catholics and the deontological arabic world is strictly against this dimension of de- human composting think that's what they say even if you bury somebody down below the soul is remaining there for some reasons this is what their belief or there is a chance for the soul to take a rebirth understand that's what they believe when you decompose what you are telling is decomposing in the earth they are decomposing in a controlled environment how do you know whether the soul is able to escape from there or not pawan understand the logic theek hai so that is how lot of argument aaj ke usme hai kya composting i don't think no chalo next india saudi arabia bilateral relations so i thought it is important from the perspective come to one uh, important dimension the political relationship mein the delhi declaration is very important in the political relationships the delhi declaration is very important and the diplomatic relations were established in 1947 itself 
वो भी नोट करो ठीक है एंड दू थाउजेंड सिक्स इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट माइल स्टोन ऑफ रिलेशन विद सऊदी अरेबिया वेन द किंग अब्दुल्ला ऑफ द यू वोटिकल सऊदी हैड विजिटेड इंडिया एंड साइन द डिक्लेन कॉल्ड डेली डिक्लेन इन द कमर्शियल रिलेशनशिप्स आफ्टर चाइना यूएसए एंड जपान सऊदी अरेबिया इज द थर्ड लार्जेस्ट ट्रेडिंग पार्टनर विथ इंडिया फोर्थ लार्जेस्ट सॉरी चाइना यूएसए जापान के बाद ठीक है नौ एंड वन मोर डायमेंशन आई वॉन्टेड टू एल पी जी सऊदी अरेबिया इज वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट कंट्रीब्यूटर्स ऑफ द एल पी जी टू इंडिया मिलिट्री एक्सरसाइज इंपॉर्टेंट अल मोहेद अल हिंद इज द मेड इन बाइलेट्रल नेवल एक्सरसाइज बिटवीन इंडिया एंड सऊदी अरेबिया अल मोहेद अल हिंदी राइट एंड दी अप्रॉक्सीमेटली टू पॉइंट टू मिलियन स्ट्रांग इंडियन कम्युनिटी इज द लार्जेस्ट एक्सपैक्ट्रिएट कम्युनिटी इन द किंगडम रिसेंटली सऊदी अरेबिया हैज डिसाइडेड नॉट टू गिव एनी वीजाज टू पाकिस्तानी पीपल this was a news i hope you have studied this now they do not want to accept any pakistani immigrants into saudi the problem is these people are not going back so that is why even after the what you call expiry of their visa whatever is the work visa and all these people are not going back from pakistan saudi so that is how saudi has decided not to accept any new what you call expatriates from pakistan good for india chalo नेक्स्ट मिनी रत्ना स्टेटस लास्ट टाइम आई गेव यू होमवर्क मिनी रत्ना नवरत्ना एंड महारत्ना स्टेटस हाँ बोलो व्हाट इज महारत्ना विच इज नॉट मिनी रत्ना बोलो अरे बोलो व्हाट इज अ महारत्ना एंटिटी फाइव थाउजेंड महारत्ना पच्चीस हजार करोड़ तुम होमवर्क नहीं कर रहे हो प्लीज मेक ए लिस्ट ऑफ महारत्ना एंटिटीज कितने महारत्ना एंटिटीज है राइट देर सी आई एम टेलिंग यू द प्रॉब्लम विथ यूपीएससी इज ऑन अ गिवन इश्यू वेर योर प्रिपरेशन स्टॉप्स ही विल आस्क द क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ दैट प्रिपरेशन सो एवरी क्वेश्चन इन द प्रिलिम्स एंड मेन्स विल बी नोन टू यू other than what has been asked those who have written prelims before they can understand what i am saying not even one question will be there that you cannot know ye kahan se aaya you will exactly know kaun se chapter se aaya you will exactly know kaun se syllabus se aaya but the problem is what he has asked you will not be able to so wherever you stop when i have asked you which of the following navratna what you call entities where status was upgraded to maharatna char company ka naam likhega kya bologe so you have to do your homework like that mini ratna navratna and maharatna so maharatna the most important dimension is the turnover dimension listing in the stock exchange <coughs> and shareholding and prescribed public shareholding under the sebi guidelines and average annual net worth of more than 15000 crores during the last 3 years net worth means the assets worth and average annual net profit of 5000 crores and should have significant global presence oblique international operations if any company is having these criteria that company is declared as a maharatna now my question and homework to is what is the advantage of being a maharatna entity what will i get being a maharatna that yeah global competence is very important global competence you remember sebi ka uh, sebi bol raha hu sbi ka mergers hua tha sbi ka bahut sara mergers hua what was the purpose to uh in the global auctioning processes in the whenever big tenders are awarded no say for example indonesian airport upgradation is there brownfield project or existing airport you have to upgrade the airport to an international standard now gmr applies for what you call that i will do this what you call project my bidding is 50000 crores example definitely GMR will not have fifty thousand crores in the account. 
obviously it is understood now the gmr will have to say which is the bank that is supporting me in this project if gmr rise sbi the project officer will read sbi is ka naam to kahin suna bhi nahi getting my point so now what will happen is he may not get the project not because gmr was incompetent but because the support of financer was not deemed was not deemed to have any global presence so that is how to elevate certain banks in india where the shareholding is so high that they have that global presence so the moment gmr tells my supporting partner when it comes to financial this thing is him my supporting partner when it comes to construction is lnt so these entities have global presence so automatically in the in the in the hierarchy of priority gmr name will go ahead so that is how doing this is very important so when you are a maharatna status it means that automatically you are one of the best performing entities in your country so whenever say for example uh, ongc is there coal india is there suddenly in africa in some country it is it was in in a in an uh, scientific discovery it was found that coal is there now they will go for global bidding in global bidding if coal india goes with a status ke i am a maharatna entity then obviously those countries will understand that this particular company has a global presence in extracting coal it has so much of experience this is the worth of this company this is the turnover of this company it means that once this company takes over this project the chances of the project successfully completing is very high so that is how for those reasons these status are primarily given so mini ratna navratna and maharatna make a box make a chart again in front of your table to be pasted theek okay? hai with current dynamics also chalo next dabba trading what is the dabba trading here ha huh. what is the dabba trading you take your tiffin box to the trading room hmm कौन बताएगा इकोनॉमी सबका हो गया है मोर और लेस अदर देन द न्यू बैच डब्बा ट्रेडिंग टेकिंग अ टिफिन बॉक्स विथ इडली इन साइड इट इज कॉल्ड डब्बा ट्रेडिंग ही इज यूजिंग अवर ट्रेडिंग आउटसाइड द मार्केट मेरे को कुछ भी समझ में नहीं आया ओके फॉर एनी ट्रेड टू गेट एग्जीक्यूटेड you need couple of things one you need a stock market two you need a dmat account yes or no all these things sir dmat account is what a dmat account what is the dmat account mere bachchon ki shanti kabhi kabhi mujhe sochne pe majboor kar deti hai ke ho kya raha hai ha what is the dmat account ha what is the dmat account mika ne chadu picture amma i have seen those videos everything has been taught to you dmat account asha acha how many of you have not heard this word dmat gautami has not heard and remaining have heard no then talk pawan 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 1 pawan 2 huh? ha intermediary earlier whenever we used to purchase shares they used to give us certificates this certificate is in the form of a material no so for example this was a certificate given to me so it this certificate holding is given to me in a materialized form a certificate physical certificate suddenly it was decided because of the you know onset of digital technology and all it is taking lot of time why not we convert this certificate into digital form so whatever account you were holding it was called dematerialized account so it was an account only holding your shares not money so you have a account separately to this account the dematerialized account gets linked and from this account you start transferring money to this and using this money you start trading on the stock market this was the procedure right now what is happening is if you have to stay, trade on the stock market you have to trade on the only the entities that are listed on the stock market yes or no yes. now what this dabba traders do is they go to the stock market now they see acha acha aise se chal raha hai okay sbi share is going at 532 something yesterday it was 548 something 
for example. Now, I know for some reasons the SBI share tomorrow will open at 562, a positive of 30. Without any of this outside the stock market, I will stand outside the stock market and I will say tomorrow SBI will trade for 562, how many takers? Now say for example, I have announced to 562, did I put any money in the account? Did I use my DMAT account? Did I get in touch with them? Nothing. Just standing outside the stock market, I made an announcement that I am ready to trade for SBI at 562 tomorrow. Now, do I have money with me? Nothing. I am just making a statement. It is pure bluff or here the best part is only this is in the game, this is not in the game, only this much amount is in the game. For example, tomorrow morning when everybody came, incidentally 562 was the opening rate of SBI. So, whosoever were betting with you, who said no it will not be, utne amount ka 30 rupees they have to say. Say for example, I announced 562, one person came 1000 shares bet. So, 1000 into, into 30, he has to give. So, he has to give me 30,000 rupees. So, that you need to understand where nobody is getting involved who are officials. It is all of unofficially which is happening outside. The problem is government is losing on the tax one dimension. Second problem is it is creating a market of market of unorganized way of doing things where speculation is entertained where speculation is entertained so you have to understand he is not bothered about 532 or 562 only he is bothered about this 30 rupees so that is how if he loses how many so our people came to him and said no it will not be 562 they have to give that money back to him so this is how pure speculation no purchasing, no account, no demat account, no tax. The chances of black money playing is very high. This is you need to understand. The chances of black money playing in these dimensions is very, very high. Because when you come here, they are asking for KYC. Here there is no KYC. So, that is how the speculation market is also going. It is called Dabba trading. One, one important line in this entire article, it says in the what is Dabba trading second point, a, in meaning may second point in simple words it is gambling centered along the stock price movements that is all, just a pure gamble, it is a pure gamble that is how things are not generally done. Okay? Yeah, green deposits was also in news. Was, what is a green deposit? The deposit which is in the color of green is called green deposit. Yes or no? No? What is the color of deposit otherwise? Ha, Bhavna. What is the color of deposit? Huh? No color? Hmm. What is the green deposit? environmental fund. Basically, see for example, I say green fixed deposit, for example, I say green fixed deposit. Now, I am just giving an example, we will come back to the article. I invested 1000 rupees in this green fixed deposit. For example, the bank earned 100 rupees from this, the bank earned 100 rupees from this deposit. Now, this 100 rupees that the bank has earned will be used for supporting nature friendly products. Got it? So, whatever money that is generated out of issuing this kind of deposit, that money that has been generated will be redirected for environmental sustainable 
projects. That is the logic of green deposits. There would be many kinds of deposit. No? What happens is the earnings here are locked to a specific purpose. You have a you know uh, targets for the banks, no priority sector lending norms. It is something like that on a different dimension of environment protection, the nature friendly projects. So, that is called green deposit. If I come back to the article, it says a green deposit means an interest bearing deposit received by the registered entities for a fixed period, the proceeds of which are earmarked for being allocated towards green finance. Got it? The proceeds of which? The first point about green deposits, may it says a green deposit means an interest bearing deposit, I told you an interest bearing deposit received by the registered entities, whose whichever entities the government, the bank, the RBI decides as registered entities, right. For a fixed period, the proceeds of which for a fixed period, it could be one year, it could be two years, it could be three years or anything. Why the reason of fixed here comes into play? Why the fixed comes into play? Because the reason why fixed comes into play, understand this, listen. If I do not make it fixed, what is the guarantee that you will keep the money there? If I make it fixed, the obligation can also be fixed. If I do not make it fixed, if the obligation is fixed, the resource is not fixed, then it will create pressure on the bank. It will have to re-divert some other earnings for sustaining this green deposit. The reason why I am giving to the fixed deposits is I do not want to create an additional obligation on the bank. So, that only that period of time of money can be redirected for a particular cause. Are you understand me? No? Good. Huh. No? Good. Even if it is no, it is good. Take it. Chalo. Come to the last column exclusion. Come to the last column exclusion. What is the exclusion? Some of the sectors which are excluded are nuclear power generation, direct waste incineration. What is incineration? Burning. Incineration is burning. Alcohol, weapons, tobacco, gaming, palm oil in industries and hydro plants larger than 25 megawatts. So, these are the entities which are not part of your green deposits. This cannot be. right? Uh, financed through the green deposit. This is what you have to make a list of. Exercise Orion, very important. The Indian Rafale combat aircraft are set to participate in a multinational war game codenamed Orion, which is being hosted by France at Mont de Marsan, an air force base of the French Air and Space Force. Exercise Orion, multinational exercise hosted by French government. The backdrop of this exercise is the ongoing Russia Ukraine conflict where NATO led by US is opposing the Russian moves. It is reportedly the largest ever multinational exercise being carried out by France defense forces which have involved their army, navy and air force. So, the exercise Oran would be the first overseas exercise for the Indian Air Force Rafale aircraft. So, after the purchase of this Rafale aircraft from France, for the first time the Rafales of Indian Air Force are going to participate in the international event. Okay? It involves many of France's NATO and other important allies like Germany, Greece, Italy, Netherlands, United Kingdom, Spain and United States of America. Now, understand, we will come to the last paragraph, do you know Vala? Understand this dimension, multinational exercise or war games, understand this. I am telling you countries like France, countries like US, countries like Germany, countries like Spain, everybody is coming. In the foundation classes, I spoke about this. What is the intention of joint military exercises? What is that word? Inter operability. This is the reason for any joint military exercise. If my Indian Air Force is participating in a multinational exercise, 
I get a beautiful exposure to my air staff who know will come to know not only the interoperability dimensions, what is the new technology, where I am inferior, where I am superior, what are the latest in weapons, all these dimensions would be understood by them. So, in future if you want to say he also has Rafael, he, he has the F 16s. Now, you in this exercise will try to see he is superior to him or inferior to him, superior to him in what dimension, inferior to him in what dimension, what is the avionics of this aircraft, what is the radar signal pattern of this aircraft, all these dimensions you will come to know. So, it is always good to participate in these kind of what you call war games, so that you understand the interoperability. Say for example, suddenly in Indian Ocean there is an issue related to pirates, issue related to pirates and you have done a naval exercise say with Seychelles. Seychelles is a country, you have done a naval exercise with Seychelles which is the closest in the Indian Ocean and there is a piracy incident in the Indian Ocean where one of the ships of say Russia was passing by and the pirates have taken over the naval ships. Now, if there is no interoperability equation matching between India and Seychelles, you cannot launch a joint operation. If you want to launch a joint operation, the conduct of this kind of exercises in the past are very essential. In this what happens is, we will decide what would be the frequency band, what could be the code signs. See, understand you are on the land, you have phone, WhatsApp, everything, on the water nothing works, on the water nothing works. It is always radio signals that comes into play through satellite, radio signals comes into play. Now, if you do not know what is the radio frequency used by Seychelles, if you do not know his code signs, if you do not know his code words, in the night for example, there are two ships they want to communicate with each other without even radio. Many a times during war time strict radio silence is maintained. It means nobody even will press the radio button. Pressing the radio button is also stopped, not or, or what you call allowed. In this situation, what one ship will do? it will fire three flares, flare is a light, light, Just some Diwali mein nahi, rocket jalate, something like that is a flare. One ship has fired first flare green, second flare red, third flare green. It means green over red over green. Now this green over red over green will have a meaning. If you have done joint exercise, only then you will understand what is the signal he is trying to give without communicating anything on the radio side. Second comes red over, red over, green, two times red then green, it may have a different meaning. So, these kind of exercises will help us to understand a crisis situation being faced by anybody, very, very important so that you can carry out the exercise as well. That is the reason why the exercises are carried out with different countries. Okay? Huh. Validity matlab? That is why it is annual generally. That is why it is generally annual. What happens is, understand this, one more thing. For example, April may you carried out an exercise. You decided to bring some change in your frequency banding. September may your country government decided do not use frequency this, use this frequency. This can be communicated to your ally country. Hello, when our signaling this, we have carried out a small change, highly confidential, it is a secret document, right. So, a secret message will come to you, instead of that 235 band, now we are using 238 band. So, whenever you want to communicate, you have to come on to the 238 band. Even after coming to 238 band, there are certain code signals that have to be passed on. Only after that they will accept that you are the friend, otherwise you are accepted as a, not as a friend. So, you have to identify yourself. Say for example, 
your ship's name is INS Sahayadri, okay. But your ship will have a code name, Kalazar calling. Your ship's name is Kalazar. Now he knows what to respond to this code name Kalazar. So if, if he says Safed Hati, then that is when you know that his ship name has been given the code name of Safed Hati. So that is how like why the code names are very typically you know made is you will generally not find a white elephant. So these names are you know made like such that nobody can fluke it, nobody can fluke it. It will never be deadly snake, the code name will never be deadly snake. We all know that snakes are deadly. So what is the code name? Beautiful snake. So that it is very difficult for somebody who is trying to come in the frequency to find out actually what is happening. Who is this beautiful snake idiot beach man? So try to understand because the enemy signal detachments are regularly checking various frequency bands to catch some signal strength. So you need to understand all these things are done for that purpose only. Coming into do you know the Indian Air Force has previously participated in war games with foreign countries including once with the French Air Force in Jodhpur called Desert Night. Please underline the word Desert Night with the France. Exercise Coop India 23, a bilateral air exercise between India and the US is being held at Air Force Station Arjan Singh, Panagad, Kalkai Kunda and Agra. Exercise Coop India 23. Okay. So, the time is 2 o'clock. I think we will stop here. Couple of other articles are there. We will try to do it some other day. One important article related to flash droughts is there, related to heat waves is there. Please do have a look. With time permits, I will also talk about it in the next class. And terrorism index also come to the GTI wala. It is a small article only. I will try to cover it. In the terrorism index, it is measuring 163 countries. The index is released by an entity by name. Huh, Institute for Economics and Peace using data from terrorism tracker and other sources. Please underline the word terrorism tracker. Terrorism tracker, kya information there is that is important. And in this certain important information, Afghanistan remains to be the country that is most affected by terrorism. Last line of the article, Afghanistan is the most affected country by terrorism. And the GTI index is a comprehensive index of 163 countries covering 99.7 percent of the world. It means that more or less the entire world is covered in this, right. And it produces a composite score as to provide an ordinal ranking of countries on the impact of terrorism, where it is saying the GTI scores of each country on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 indicating no impact and 10 indicating the highest impact. And it says this report says that IS, the Islamic State, even today remains to be the most formidable terrorist organization in the world for the eighth consecutive year. So, for 2022 also, the topmost country is the your Islamic State, ISIS, you remember. Then Sahel, Sahel, you remember, I spoke about this region, Sahel, Konsa tha? Hey. Marunga Uthake. Ah, the African region. Sahel is that African, no? Heart of Africa. Ah, the entire Niger, Shad, those countries coming in the Sahel region. Map bhi dikhaya tha, if I remember correctly. Okay. So, Sahel region, please Google the Sahel region, very important. Sahel countries and Afghanistan, Pakistan region. So, it is said that deaths from attacks by unknown jihadists globally are 8 times higher than 2017, representing 32 percent of all the terrorism deaths and 18 times higher in the Sahel. So, this is what the Sahel is the most impacted region, Afghanistan is the most impacted country, Sahel is the most impacted region, 40, representing 43 percent of the global terrorism deaths. Okay? So, this is very important. Now, come to the heat wave article, the last article that I am going to discuss, the heat wave article, important in news, come to the criteria for declaring a heat wave, considered if the maximum temperature of a station reaches at least 40 degrees centigrade, this was in the Indian Express couple of days before, 
if the in the uh, attestation 40 degrees centigrade or more for plain in a plain area and at least 30 degrees centigrade or more for a hilly region if it is so then the the it is considered to be a heat wave region now the homework for you is what is the heat wave criteria for a coastal region heat wave criteria for a coastal region try to make it based on temperature from normal heat wave departure from uh, based on departure from normal heat wave departure from normal is 4.5 degrees to 6.40 degrees say for example every year during a time period in a plane if the temperature is 40 degrees centigrade but if the departure is 4.5 to 6.4 degrees more than the normal temperature observed during that period in that region even that is considered to be heat wave why because recently in mumbai 11 people died in one single day due to the heat wave in mumbai so that is how this article has become important right and if if it is a severe heat wave the departure is more than normal that is 6.40 degrees se agar jyada departure hai in the temperature then it is called a severe heat wave okay based on the actual maximum temperature heat wave when the actual maximum temperature is greater than or equal to 45 degrees irrespective of the location if the temperature is greater than or equal to 45 degrees centigrade it is declared as a heat wave it is declared as a heat wave very important now this paragraph last paragraph if the above criteria met at least in two stations in a metrological subdivision for at least two consecutive days and it was declared on the second day it means that the consecutiveness of this heat wave has to be there for minimum two days and two adjacent metrological stations then only that area would be declared to be witnessing heat waves now what is the reason why the government declares a heat wave yes a peripheral points what is the real reason you are district you are in a district which is known for heat waves Anmagunda, for example, Ramagundam, classic example. What is your responsibility as a district collector? Farmers, what will you do as a district collector? You cannot control the heat, that is for sure, even if you are a district collector. You cannot look up and say, hello, cool down. Yeah? Okay. Then, what, what, what? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. For? For? Ah. For animals and humans, both. Very important. And it is mandated as per the district manual how much distance these water points have to be established. If the heat condition touches 50 degrees centigrade, even the government is supposed to water the road. Road ke upar pani dalna, it is mandatory. That is why the government does not declare 50, even if it is 50. 48.9, 49.8, 50 kare. I am standing, my clock is telling 52, the government is quoting 49. Because it knows that it is responsible to do certain actions. So, one dimension is the provision of this. Second dimension is health centers, where dehydration camps have to be established by the government at regular intervals in the market. Three, opening and closing of institutions can be regulated like schools, like colleges, like any government institutions. It can order, the district administration can order early opening and closing and it can order late opening and late closing because of the heat conditions. One more important dimension, think. Heat conditions, heat conditions, you are the district collector, what can come to you? Fire accidents. Ah, fire accidents, very important. The dimension of the preparedness of the fire tenders, the preparedness of the entire team of first responders related to fire actions, they have to be tested upon, they have to be kept in 24 into 7 alert mode. You will see in newspapers now more incidents of fire accidents and all will happen every year it happens okay 
So, these are all the responsibilities that the government is supposed to take care. Okay. So, this was in the current affairs dynamics. So, we are done with the current affairs. Whatever has been taught today, anybody having any doubts, please ask. If NPP, Kaka, Bengal, no idea, I have to see. I have not heard also this name. Is it a NPP is a national party? I do not think so. I do not think so. I have to check back to you, but I do not think so. Huh, bol. If there is unrest in Sikkim, okay. 100 percent, 100 percent, why be, huh. ignorance, you have chosen a finance minister, Take. see understand these small mistakes will disturb the peace, Sikkim kya hi tax bhar dega, kya ho raha hai, you understand, but see understand the obligation of the government. We always say, no, extend the tax base. Hum theoretical, that's why, you know, theoretical physics and practical physics may both work. Uh, if you see that uh, serial, no, Sheldon Cooper ka, kya naam hai usko serial? Naam bol raha? Huh? Young Sheldon. Young Sheldon, Sheldon Cooper, he becomes grown up. America, you do not see any English. Young, young Sheldon to ho gaya. What did you say? Chinnari Pali Kuthuru you will see. <laughs> see understand, these, these are meant to only increase the tax base. That is the logic that the government is trying to buy. But these will create unrest in other 371 A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So, this the government has to realize that corrections will happen. Otherwise, see, Sikkim will not go and sit in China's lab, that is for sure. Uske li bhi jiyo or maro wala ka problem. So, now that 370 has gone, so now everybody is worried ke next mera number hai kya. So, they are trying to raise voice. If any single move is against them, that is how Nagaland, that is how Sikkim, kal ko Manipur mein bhi hoga, leave everybody, AP mein hoga. So, understand, one, on one side government is wanting paisa to chahiye na, desh chalane ke liye paisa chahiye. You have to increase the tax base. The moment you say Sikkim people also have to pay tax. I hope you are aware the northeastern people who belong to northeast, who are posted in northeast working for the government, they do not pay any tax, not even income tax. I hope you are aware of this. A Sikkim, a northeastern origin individual, if he is posted in northeast, he does not have to pay any tax, including income tax. Ante, you have to pay because, so they do not pay. That is how I have some of my friends who change cars every year. So, I feel I should have been born there. So, it happens at times. You know. But the moment they come out of northeast to normal state, they have to pay the tax. So, that is how. So, as a provisions diya hai for, for uplifting their you know living standards, economic betterment and all. Take. Anything else? Sir. Hmm. Two sirs, three sirs, huh. they are sirs. See, understand whenever a major terrorist attack happened, it always happened on the sideline of an important event. Always, always and every time. The reason is they know that the entire media of these many countries is sitting in India. The moment a terrorist attack happens, automatically this news will go to all the countries of the world. So, I do not have to pay single rupee to any marketing agency to market about my activities. Automatically the marketing will happen. So, that is why terrorism ideology, no? so the, the attack of terrorists in a particular country, what is the intention? to showcase to the world, tum iske saath G20 ki baat to kar rahe ho, you are talking about development, you are talking about investment, but do not forget there is a pending problem here. So, it is basically to create a negative sentiment for investment, 
that is the basic intention that you need to understand. But problem what happens is when these kind of events are organized the entire energy goes into organizing that event. The energies are not diverted that security ko bhi ek priority dena hai. It does not happen generally. When you become bureaucrats tomorrow you will realize that security gets the least priority. Least priority and in some instances no priority. The moment any person who is responsible for security comes to you and tell sir yes yes ho sakta hai timeless. You, you try to divert his thing and concentrate only on the meeting. What if something goes wrong? The moment something goes wrong you will call the same person and thrash him. What were you doing? He says sir I came to you with a file trying to explain you gida vochu naku nalgur nisthi ada nilcha vedutanu. Something like that. If you give me 4 people, if you give me 10 people, this squad given to me, I will try to sanitize the entire area. You did not listen. See, the problem is our civilian administration fails to think like a terrorist. Cannot think, that is the problem. And it is in some ways good also, but in some ways bad also. You cannot think. You will not believe in JNK. I will share an incident. Flag hoisting happened today. Flag hoisting happened today, 15 August or 26 January. When the flag pole is removed, you will not believe. Next day, 364 days mein flag hoisting hona hai, same place. But flag this in the 364 days timer with the bomb it. 364 days timer IED, improvised explosive device, timed for 364 days was kept there. Because the moment event open, security zero. Jab tak event ho raha hai, security is tight, you will see dogs also, you will see everybody doing. You know. The moment event is over, that tent guy will come, he will remove the floor, everything happened. When they came to remove the pole and all, one person also came with a IED in a tiffin box, dakkan lagaya, on kiya, 364 days, matti dal diya. Exactly after 364 days, same time, he came for this and it. You cannot imagine how they think, it is beyond your imagination. Improvised explosive devices is such that you can tame to behave the way you want it to behave. Water bottle hai, pani ka bottle hai, you put pressure cap hai, he put water, water till here, chana, chana galu, dal ke chhod diya, he knows for this chana to take the water and swell it and cover this distance, it will take this much time. The moment the swelling happens, it touches the trigger, it will explode. So, just imagine what ground level they are going to improvise how to create a bomb explosion. Northeast one bomb explosion happened, we all ran towards where the bomb explosion happened. What he did? Small bomb, big bomb. First small bomb will explode, everybody will assemble what happened, what happened, what happened, big bomb will explode, understand. So, these things see that is what you have to think like a terrorist, but what we think like a civilian that is the problem. So, as a bureaucrat whatever position you are always think for the worst, be prepared for the worst. Generally anybody coming, anybody going nobody is bothered. You never know tomorrow somebody comes put a box there and goes. We all will not notice. Char paan din chala jayega, you will think iska baage, he will think uska baage, he will think pata nahi kiska hai, mero kya lena jana. So, that alertness level goes down. But in an airport, the moment a bag is spotted, nobody is claiming it. 10 minutes mein you will see somebody is watching that. Kya ho raha hai, whose bag is this? You, if you say I went to coffee leaving my bag here, you will be scolded like anything. Literally, you will be scolded because it will create a trigger mechanism. I will tell you personal experience. Delhi is once the entire Delhi railway station was emptied because of me. <laughs> Literally, Hazrat Nizamuddin station, I got a big love letter. And the worst part was I was not traveling. I sent my trunk of clothes and other thing in that. What I did in middle of that, I a computer ka UPS dal ke bez diya. UPS. The moment uska battery down hua, wo TT karna shuru kiya. Aur wo TT karna shuru kiya after unloading at the Hazrat Nizamuddin station. 
believe me the entire station was emptied and i got a call from delhi i was posted in assam and usme army truck army baksa mera naam bhi likha hua mera mobile number bhi likha hua immediately called bhaiya humne pura station empty kar diya isme kya hai and i also forgot ki i have put a cpu i only said usme kapde hai when they called me i said i don't remember anything i only remember i had put some clothes then the bomb squad came कॉर्डन दी एंटायर स्टेशन पूरा नाटक हुआ फिर यू पी एस बाहर निकाला फिर मेरे को लव लेटर मिला इतना बड़ा कि तूने क्या किया टाइप सो दिज आर ऑल पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस सो यू हैव टू बी केयरफुल बेसिकली दैट्स यू लॉसिंग ठीक है चल हाँ यू आर आस्किंग समथिंग यू हैव टू बी केयरफुल इंटेलिजेंट यू हैव टू शो केज ओनली फ्यू डाइम दैट्स वाई वेन यू आर डीलिंग विथ पाकिस्तान ऑन द प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ एस सी ओ on the platform of rats the regional anti terrorist structure you are more cautioned so the interoperability should not reveal your weakness at the same time try to gain the assets of others that's the logic that's why you whenever any ship or any unit is going for any this kind of exercises lot of briefings happen honey trapping tumne suna hi hai honey trapping india mein there are examples of women officers getting honey trapped by male also i hope you are aware generally it is the male officers or male people who get honey trapped by using women as a source but in india there are examples of women high level foreign services officers getting honey trapped by male pakistan ka goel madhuri gupta if i remember now her name correctly she was then discharged from service teen saal ka punishment mila sab kuch mila on pakistani guy honey trapped so this thing happened this thing happened theek so this interoperability you have to understand whenever a ship is sent lot of modifications are done to to hide certain dimensions of the ship so ye sab cheeze chalti not to be taught in the class so that's all theek hmm anything else if you know everything now if you don't become a bureaucrat chal you will be an informed citizen chal thank you Wait, wait. Regarding that, थोड़ा movie में थोड़ा दिखाते हैं, but reality. See, listen. Generally, all my friends forcefully take me to army background movies, and I hate to go because it is nowhere closer to reality. This movie, no, not. कौन सा movie था यार? Uri, Uri. Uri. Uri movie. I went to the theater with somebody. I started laughing. Everybody looked at me, and the person with me, Ray, he looks ampestar ranu na vagra. I am like, this does not happen. She is like, they will not ask. First they will beat you, then they will ask. Then there is no point telling who you are. I said I was involved in that only. I know what happened there. So. It, that's why when we see the movie i generally don't relish any one mahesh babu movie came no what was that movie yes ah sar leru ne kevaru i had a hearty laugh in that movie wo coffee pee raha hai wahan bomb lagaye some nonsense was shown because for a civilian it could be digestible but for a person who has been there it is not digestible so that's why i avoid generally i avoid so that's how all this movies the soldier is never on duty some nonsense movies no i never watch those movies okay because they are nowhere near to reality and they are not supposed to show reality also that is also that's why the ranks and the tabs are all upside down sab ulta seedha lagate because they are not supposed to showcase the real insignias and all so that's how it is always showcased in a some some distorted way some distorted way okay chalo 